Hi, my name is Choma Phillips and this is Msingi Africa Television. Thank you for joining us again for another episode. Behind me, you see the beautiful Lake Paradise, which is atop Mount Marsavit in Marsavit Town in Marsavit County. It's just so beautiful. You know, many Kenyans are surprised to find out just how green Marsabit can be because growing up, all we were told is that it is a semi-arid area, barely gets any rainfall, so it's very, very dry. And so when we tell them that in Marsabit town, it gets very misty and actually it rains and it's really cold, people are usually tremendously surprised to discover. Well, here is your proof today. This is one of two lakes on Mount Marsabit. Um, the other one is a little, is about uh, eight kilometers away from here. And Marsabit is also known as the cradle of mankind. And why is that? Because uh, the Leakeys found remains, human remains, the earliest human remains in Marsabit County. And so when the county system was set up in Kenya, Marsabit County became the cradle of mankind which is amazing. Yes, we know there is a debate about whether um, the earliest humans were from East Africa or whether they came from South Africa. But well, that kind of brings me to another point. With all the beauty and with all the diversity that is around us, somehow in Africa, we always seem to manage to find a way to divide and to debate endlessly about things that at the end of the day, if you actually sit down and think about it, they might not be as important as we try to make them. By which I mean, is it really, really necessary to have endless arguments about origins of mankind? Does it make us more superior if we came from the south or from the east or from the north or from the west? I don't really know. What I do know is that as beautiful as this landscape is, you and I are more beautiful and you and I are the point of life in Africa. Because at the end of the day, it's not about the acquisition of things. It's not about building roads or building hospitals. It's about us being able to actually come to a place and a position where we see each other. We see each other as brothers and sisters. Instead of walking into a room and people immediately start to check you out and then ask you, which country did you come from? Which community are you from? Those features look like you speak this language. You guys, you look like you're those guys who like to herd cattle. That means you people, you people are the ones who like to love money. I don't know. I don't know why it's so important to focus on discord rather than finding ways to build concordance and harmony and brotherhood and family between us. We have 1.3 billion Africans based on different people's um, reckonings of the numbers. And all those 1.3 billion people represent an opportunity for Africa to be amazing and to be great and to be strong and to build something that is so great and awesome. Because among us, we have scientists and we have doctors and we have engineers and we have teachers and we have mothers and we have fathers. We have students, people willing to learn. We have people who just want to work the earth and grow crops. We have people who understand the dangers of toxicity and of chemicals. We have people who have studied issues to do with illness. We have people who are experts in herbal medicine and remedies. I mean, we are amazing and we are amazingly equipped. And not only that, our brothers and sisters who were torn from Africa during the period of slavery and taken to different parts of the world have been spying out the lands for us for generations, 400 years. And like the Israelites, it is time for their return. So we have resources and skills and people and ideas and people to love and whose company we can actually enjoy, who we can work together with as one. All we need to do is shed off every attitude that we have, any pride, any arrogance, any perception that we are better or greater than anybody else. What is better than and greater than anyway, except another line of division? What for? To what end? The division between Africans only works to benefit those who are working against Africa. The other night, 
we were camping in the forest and we met a group of lovely people from Marsabit County, each one coming from different communities. All of them hanging out together and interacting like with just so much fun. And when we talked to them, we immediately formed bonds on the basis of African brotherhood. We were united on the basis that these invisible imaginary borders that were imposed upon us by the colonialists only serve as hindrances to our liberty. Africans should be able to move north, west, east and south without any hindrance. In fact, that reminds me, one day my husband and I were sitting and talking about visas and we were laughing about how in the Masai Mara, you know, tourists will go there in their vans to watch the wildebeest crossing of the Mara River and, you know, watch animals being devoured by crocodiles. But then miss the whole point and the whole irony behind the fact that these animals will cross freely between two countries with no visa required. They're just crossing. I want to go and eat here and drink this water. They cross again. I want to go and eat here and drink this water. The lions are following them because they want to eat them. And everyone's just sort of crossing back and forth however they, however they please. But when it comes to humans, you have to get a piece of paper that is signed and stamped by a government official that will then allow you to walk through a very narrow border crossing so that you can then access the other country. And you have paid for this piece of paper and for access to this country. So those animals are there crossing the river looking and saying, look at these fools. No freedom, no liberty. Our question is, why would you subject people to that sort of torture and torment? What's the point? We are better off together. We are better off bringing our brothers and sisters from the US and other countries where they want to come from to come home. We're better off bringing them back home. They have knowledge and understanding and wisdom and experiences we don't have. We have knowledge, understanding, wisdom and experiences they don't have. Imagine the power of all of that put together, you guys. Come on. We are amazing together. We are better off together. So let's find a way to eliminate this whole thing of let me see your passport first and come to the place where we ask, what's up with you? How are you doing? Is your family well? Is there any help I can offer you? Talk to me. Even if it's a listening ear, it can make a tremendous difference. What do you think? Let us have your comments and your thoughts and your opinions in the comments below this video. Thank you for watching. Um, like, share, subscribe to this channel. And um, if you'd like to support our work, please find ways how you can do that in the description below this video. But thanks again for taking your time to stop by. We just wanted to share with you our thoughts on love and African brotherhood. And is it possible? Yes. As long as you and I get down and get it done. See you next time. Today's video was brought to you by a friend of Tuna Cheki. Are you an African YouTuber who's passionate about African issues and want to join our friends of Tuna Cheki community? Send us an email at tunacheki at gmail.com and we might just feature your video. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our African videos. Remember to also leave suggestions of topics that you'd like us to cover in the comments below.